Welcome back friends. Today we are tackling a problem that I have essentially known about since like the first week of living in this house and have wanted to do something about it. We're gonna do it today. While we are so blessed with a gorgeous open concept kitchen, there really only is this one small corner to plug in all of your small kitchen appliances. So by the time we have the toaster, the kettle, the coffee maker, things that we use pretty much on a daily basis, it's completely full in this corner. Let alone you wanna add a plate or two before they go in the dishwasher, any specialty appliance, like you wanna bring out the blender, it's full. It's a chaotic mess in that corner. And I wanna solve this. Welcome back to the series where I challenge myself to use thrifted materials and a love of all things retro to DIY our family home from this farmhouse to that 70s house. Okay, let me show you what we're working with in here. And it's also a shame there's this big kind of wooden pole in the way so I can't get you a nice like straight on. I would love to do that, but then you'd be staring at this post. Side angle it is. I've really never taken the time to organize this well because since the day we moved in, I knew that I wanted to DIY something here because this is just not cute. I mean, the shelving that's already inside of it is very much DIY. Each shelf is made of like a different piece of wood and the wood that's holding the shelves up has just been very like hack jobbed in there together. We are going to not keep this. <laughs> and I think that starts with taking everything out. I don't even really have a good sense of how much space I have in here to work with because there's so much clutter in the way. So, there's some bigger appliances in here that really don't get used that often, like this is a dehydrator. It can probably get stored somewhere in the kitchen better, doesn't need to go here. Slow cooker, probably doesn't need to go back in there. Active fry, should make some fries. So many light bulbs, why? <laughs> light bulbs, light bulbs, light bulbs, light bulbs, light bulbs. This light bulb is literally broken. Grocery bags, grocery bags, grocery bags. A Chia pet that never sprouted. Poor little guy. This is um, the bread box that I actually bought when I finished my last kitchen makeover in the old house. It's totally beautiful and I love it, but unfortunately there's Literally no good place to put it. So I'm hoping this can be one of the things that this coffee bar solves. I'm kind of just realizing now is that there's this big pipe here which goes to the bathroom, right? That's probably what it's for. So I'll have to work around that somehow. Do you think I can close that in? Like if I just put Yeah, if we put like a little box around it. Well, that's not what I was thinking. Like can What's I put a- What's this wire for? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't notice that either earlier. Can I just put a whole wall in front of that or do you need to access that pipe? Uh, probably don't need to. I wanna get rid of this it's so bad. Shake it really hard. The whole bathroom is gonna come down. Need <laughs> power tools. The door isn't working. Okay, taking off the walls and we just found a metal- It's a safe. <laughs> a metal thing behind the wall. I'm hoping there's gold on the other side. A gold bar. Behind the mirror. This is like so cool. This is like, uh, I don't even know. Like, like some, some from a movie. <laughs> national treasure. Yeah, national treasure. <laughs> I never knew that mirror opened. I literally never knew that. I was hoping there was gold in here. I thought you were gonna lift that off the wall like it was hanging on a, a nail and then there'd be something behind it. Who would have never known that? I never would have known that. That doesn't look like the kind of mirror you think opens. <laughs> I was hoping for something cool in here. Yeah, I was hoping so too. At least like some old, super old like uh, Bobby Dazzlers? Yeah, I don't know. Even an old toothbrush. Uh, maybe I wouldn't want to find that. Okay, but that's annoying because I wanted to move that mirror over, but yeah, now there's a big hole in the wall. Oh. Oh. Hello. <laughs> what would you like to order? <laughs> so now this is the bathroom. 
people. It's actually a viewing window, so when someone's in there, we're gonna put like a two-way mirror on there so we can like see what's going on. That's so in weird. <laughs> um, okay, great. Progress, I think. So this is how it's looking so far. Pretty much have everything taken out of it. All the shelves are gone. <laughs> That's now a fun little surprise. Paneling's gone. It's pretty much a blank slate, I guess, at this point. Yeah, I've never used this before. The Sawzall? Sawzall. Is that a guarantee? Will it saw everything? Everything. All. It'll saw all. Am I gonna hit, like, is there screws or anything? Oh, this will cut through it. Just cut it inch below. It'll cut through anything, don't worry. So I'll just cut straight across. This is something you gotta learn. Just go ahead. Oh, there's like old tile on there. Whoa! It's like a, what's that word, like vinyl flooring? Yeah, I thought it was real rocks. I did too at first, because that would be cool if that was old stone. Well, okay. Is it okay to tile on top of that stuff? I don't really know what's going on here. <laughs> Seems pretty loose, loosey goosey. That's amazing, it really, really opened it up. Wait till we take away even more. You use a chainsaw inside. What? Now, usually I know exactly kind of the vision of what I want to do when I do a space, but today I do not. <laughs> I, I know the function that I need this to have. It needs to be kind of like a countertop space where I can put the small appliances and probably some sort of storage above since we have the space for it. But like what that's gonna look like, I don't know, so let's do a little bit of brainstorming together. So this is my Pinterest board. Um, <laughs> if you ever wanna know what project I'm working on in this exact moment, go to my Pinterest because I probably have a board going for it that I'm constantly adding to. Uh, okay, so let's go here to coffee bar. Like there's just so many different vibes and feelings I have pinned here. Something like kind of like this is probably what I'm leaning towards the most where there's like the you know, cabinets below and then cupboards above um, in this, this dark wood's really nice. And I like that it's kind of, I guess it's got tile behind it. You know, then there's something like this, which is more floating shelves with a square tile behind. But I do think I like the closed storage more. I love the vibe of this place, how the one side is kind of rounded, but I don't think I can get away with that since it has to fit so nicely into the space we already have. Now this one I'm obsessed with, but I just don't think it's practical for what I need. It's very much like a retro 70s kind of spaceship cut out into the wall, but I'm not prepared to fully drywall out a spot with like insets for spaces like this, but that is cool. Come on, that is cool. This one's interesting to me because quite clearly the storage above does not necessarily match the cabinets below, which if I can't thrift a matching set, it's good to know that something like this could still work. And you know, this is, this is more of like your what's in style right now kind of vibe with simple cupboards below and above and then you do like a stoneware counter and matching backsplash of the same stone. It is really pretty too. I think what I'm gonna do is head over to our Discord, which if you did not know, we have a Sorry Girls Discord full of a whole community of amazing people that just love DIY and interior design. And I'm gonna go ask them which direction they think I should lean into. They're like the trusted squad. <laughs> They're the people that really get it. And I feel like will give me the right opinions here. Um, if you're not yet a part of that community, all the information is below. Not only do myself and Kelsey and other members of the team pop in there periodically to ask you questions like this, it's also a great place for you to just talk to other people that like this kind of stuff about design and DIY. It like, <laughs> it warms my heart so much when I see you guys having separate conversations about things you're working on in your spaces and you're giving each other advice and showing each other the things you've thrifted that you're so excited about. Let's phone a friend, phone friends. Phone all my friends on Discord. Okay, I've crafted a message in the Discord chat. Basically just saying, hi, I'm working on this new space and I need your help. Currently it's this closet and I need it to serve this purpose. And then I sent these inspo pictures as I think the closest reference to what I'm looking for, but I don't really know. 
and I'm gonna let your thoughts roll in. Brew on this tonight a little more and then hopefully tomorrow I'll come back and have a really solid plan so we can tackle this. Okay. Hello, good morning. I'm singing a little A. Antique. <laughs> um, okay, so today I am out. I'm gonna go look at a couple antique furniture places because I, one thing I know for certain is I want to do cabinets of some sort like in this space uh, definitely like lower ones potentially upper ones and if you don't know I am on a journey to use um, solely items that have had another life before me in my house basically a fancy way to say secondhand thrifted vintage pieces instead of buying new so I'm gonna try and go look at some vintage cabinets and sideboards and whatnot today so I have the tiniest little sketch with me and a measuring tape and we are gonna go see what we see today I really hope I find something so this first place while very very cool it was all smaller items so no cabinets to be found here this next place did have all larger furniture but it was extremely curated and therefore way out of my budget so last up, I found the sweet spot between the two, and this is where I found a gorgeous walnut sideboard and a walnut cabinet, and they're both coming home with me. All right, I am back with both a lower cabinet and an upper cabinet, and some progress has been made. It's like officially all cleared out now, and what are you doing? I'm gonna show everyone the pot filler. <laughs> this is a fun, uh... Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of this. That is amazing. It doesn't leak. You were working on that the whole time I was gone. That wasn't something that I had in the initial plan at all. But when we realized it's literally the bathroom right behind there. And the pipes are right here, so it's so easy. Just kind of one of those things that we kind of should do it because we can. And how fun would that be to not have to, even though the sink's well, right over there. We're gonna walk all the way <laughs> over here to fill the coffee maker. Then you can just turn a little tap on, get the kettle full, get the coffee maker full. And I found that pot filler for 30 bucks on Marketplace. So just financially. And they were like $600 too. at Home Depot. They what a rip. were. They a were. Off. Anyways, okay, let's move on. Okay, so, we're gonna cut stuff now. We're gonna cut some stuff now. Weeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Yeah, that's we'll not good at all. Well, we got trim there and trim there, so why don't we just continue to trim across the top? It's just like so off. Like this side's flush, and this yeah. side's got a big angle. I think, being we can just get a piece of trim to cover this. I think it'd look weird without a piece of trim on the top of it, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. Is your side all the way up? Okay, hello, good morning. So, you might be wondering why we basically took away all of the closet just to leave these two little side wing parts. And there's a reason for that, I'll show you. As you can see, the tile that's all in the kitchen was placed after these walls were built, so it's cut out around this. So if I were to take away these two walls completely, there would be big patches of missing tile that I have to patch. And I'm hoping this will get mostly covered by the cabinet so that you won't really notice it. So essentially, I'm now at the point where I get to uh, tape and mud this drywall, cover all the screws, cover this line, and something I'll also need to do now is fill in these walls because they're just open. So I'll probably have to build up a front and a top and then likely drywall those as well. Okay guys, good morning. Um, I think I just found something really exciting on Marketplace. <laughs> I don't know if I was ready to take on this um, task, but I might have to do it. I was reading through all the responses on Discord and like everyone's thoughts on what they think I should do. And there was a bunch of pictures that featured this kind of like really skinny, I think it's called finger tile. That actually is in a lot of my inspo photos for like mid-century homes on a whole, but I didn't really think about incorporating it for this area specifically. I'm, I'm like literally mid drywall patching it, but maybe I don't have to if we're doing tile, which brings me to what I just found on Marketplace are these um, deep red terracotta skinny tile. And it looks like the square footage this person is selling is literally enough that like what I would need to cover this wall. I don't know if you believe in the universe or things just being serendipitous. <laughs> I feel like I have to do it. I have to do it. It's gonna look so cool. I just sent another chat in the Discord showing this actual tile because it's bold. It's bold. It's borderline like red. Asking if it's too much and the responses are saying that it's not too much and I should do it and it will look cool and I think you're right. Was I mentally prepared to tile an entire wall? No, but I think I need to do it. <laughs> okay, first things first, before I get ahead of myself, I'm gonna message this person, make sure they're available. Um, see if I can bring the price down like a little bit, cause that would be nice. In the meantime though, let's actually talk about the vintage cabinets that I picked up for the bottom and the uppers. So the bottom one is looking great. I think it's gonna fit beautifully. The top piece though is actually meant to sit on top of a lower cabinet to form like a hutch or like a display cabinet. I don't wanna do that. I wanna mount it higher than having it just sit on the bottom. So I think what I need to do is actually cut off a bit of the bottom so it's just the cabinet. And this piece has a track groove built into it as if it originally had sliding doors, probably glass based on a lot of the pieces like this. Unfortunately, this one didn't come with that, so I'm going to have to probably get either some glass or plexi, not sure yet, made to fit in because I do want to put doors on this. Wow, I don't think you guys realize how impressive this cut was. I had to take the saw and go this way and have the cut be like exactly even with this piece without actually nicking or cutting this piece and like ah! with practice you too can be this good I'm entirely self-taught and that's like wow that's beautiful not me saying how great I am while standing beside 
the uh, the piece that chipped off in the back. But that's okay, I think I can patch it. <laughs> so that's going there. And then this is gonna go up there. And these pieces are not from, okay, sir. And these pieces are not from the same set, but surprisingly, I think they work together pretty well. Do you agree, Danny? You agree? It's gonna look good? All right, I'll take that as a yes. So you just have to imagine that piece down there living up there. And then maybe we do the tile behind it. Ah, is this gonna be too much? I don't know, or is it gonna be like amazing? Maybe I've just gotten lucky, but I found that anytime there's a really bold choice to make, it's the right thing. Like I've never done something that I could think of and ever thought this is too much. Usually it's the opposite. I do something and it feels a little safe and then I I feel like it's a, it's a little boring and I wish I had done more in hindsight. Ah! Check this out. What do we think? It's not that red red in person, which is good. It's beautiful. It is stunning. And it was excess tile from someone that uh, they weren't using, so I'm glad that that didn't go to waste. It's going to me instead. I have the upper cabinet with me packed in the car right now. I am headed to the office to drop this off with Rochelle. I am hoping she can figure out the glass door situation for me while I continue to work at the space at my house. She is just a genius when it comes to figuring out how to get things done. Anytime we need a new tool, she knows exactly how to use it. So I feel good putting this job in her hands. Um, and we actually have a really exciting announcement involving Michelle, but I'll tell you more about that when we get to the office. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, it needs doors, I think. Okay, so this is Kyle. <laughs> that I got off Marketplace. No way. And I'm thinking to use it. It's pretty wild. Maybe I need to find this stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, here is that exciting announcement. So a while ago, we released on the channel a mini series of bite-sized instructional videos called How to Go Do. We'll get ready because it's coming back and this time with Rochelle as your instructor. What you can expect is an easy to understand breakdown of how to use a variety of tools as well as how to tackle basic DIY skills, all from a beginner's perspective. The first episode is all about how to build a basic DIY kit and it's coming this Thursday to the channel. Shake it up, shake it up. Yeah, baby. Yeah, mm. there you go. Today, let's talk about 20 essential tools and supplies that I think are great to have on hand when you're starting out on your DIY journey. I feel better when I have tools in my hands. God, that's Good a lot, lot of pressure. I know. Okay, you'll see her then, and you'll see me. Where am I going now? I guess back home to keep working on this project. <laughs> okay, bye. Good morning! Today is an exciting day because we have a countertop! So instead of getting this part for the project secondhand, I decided to go with a bamboo countertop, which is something I just wanted to try out. Bamboo is a highly sustainable wood. It's super regenerative, is that a word? We... It's grass. It's grass. It's super renewable because you can get a full grown bamboo plant in just a couple months, whereas traditional hardwood could take years to grow. Plus it's really pretty. Let's get it out. Wait, ew, that sounded so weird. <laughs> I mean, let's get this, let's get it on where it's going so we can see how it's looking. Subscribe. That's awesome. That's cool. I like it. Wow. <laughs> Are you kidding? That is a perfect fit. Oh. 
All right, it's time to tile. I haven't fully convinced myself if I like or don't like the tiling process. It's still up in the air. All right, I've committed. That's cute, I think. <laughs> Okay, so the tile is up, it is finished. I went in after the fact and added just a simple wood trim around the perimeter to basically cover where the tile ended. As you can see, there is a big gap in the tile and I did that intentionally and we will talk about that next because there's a reason for it. So as you can see, there's still a lot of work to be done. And actually, neither of my thrifted antique items were even in this space yet, so those need to definitely come in. And speaking of those pieces, those are walnut and there's a lot of wood tones going on here currently that are not walnut. We have to do something about that too, if this is ever gonna come together in the way that I think it's going to in my head. All that to say, you are absolutely going to have to trust the process and I will see you in part two. This is going to work out manifesting. <laughs> Subscribe if you're enjoying this. See you next time, bye. Before you go though, remember that series called How To Go Do that's coming back to our channel this Thursday? Did you watch me patch some drywall in this episode and wish you maybe knew a little bit more? Well, you can check out a previous episode that's all about patching holes in drywall and it's linked right here. See you there. We like using this pink spackle. It turns completely white once it's finished drying.